Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here once again on this Monday night. Uh, it is about 10.44 p.m. here, California time. And latest activity looks like some movement going on up into the Alaska area. Looks like a 5.6 and a 4.5 up here around the uh, Lucian Islands, Lucian Trench area. Also seeing some movement over here across the Kurokamachaka Trench with a couple fives and some fours kicking up here. Quite active following the uh, larger event this morning, or I think it was earlier this afternoon, we did see a 6.8 coming into the area of Papua New Guinea. We'll go ahead and check this out here in a little bit. Uh, we do have some larger movement coming into the Iceland area. Uh, last 12 hours here, about 48 earthquakes, but uh, we're noticing some newer earthquake activity here. Uh, a ways away from the Grindavik area, where all the recent activity has been stirred up. Uh, this activity occurring, again, within the uh, rift zone, so to speak, here of Iceland. Uh, but definitely a ways away from this area, but we'll continue to watch this. Uh, as we may see some further uptick around the Grindavik area. Now, most of the activity has been relatively small. We did see a couple twos, though, here north of the Grindavik area of Iceland within the last 12 hours. Uh, the latest informational statement, let's go back over here and check this out. We covered that this morning in uh, the update. Activity still located primary near the uh, Slingerfell area and Hagafell region. Now that's northeast of the Grindavik area. And they're still thinking here that uh, uh, this is going to be the zone north of Grindavik here uh, where the eruption possibility will take place. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, again, earthquake activity on the elevated side here. Um, in the last 12 hours. So continue to watch it and report back on anything that uh, may be changing out here. We'll cover that tomorrow morning. Uh, there's the activity there in the Fox Islands area of the Aleutian Trench. Uh, 5.6 coming in about 25 kilometers deep. That was followed up here uh, by a 4.5 within the same area. So it does look like we are seeing some adjustment taking place here across this area of the plate boundary. That and along with some movement here across the Curl Kamachaka Trench. I did see a 5.0 earlier this evening as well. So a little bit of uptick going on here across this area. We'll continue to watch this region up here as it does look quite active um, considering that we're seeing further activity along the Aleutian Trench. Uh, Hawaii definitely shown some activity out here in the last couple hours or so. Um, getting a little separate swarm down here south of the summit area. Now this is somewhat new and uh, it is relatively shallow here. About two to three kilometers below the surface. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the latest activity here. Let me go over to the volcano site and we'll see what's going on in terms of inflation and earthquake activity. Definitely an odd area well south of the summit region. And that earthquake activity is outside of the, of the zone, so to speak, of where we have seen uh, the most recent earthquake swarm. The earthquake swarm that in question uh, was down here, well, I should say up here, closer to the summit. This here is kind of new. Some uh, interesting uh, development there. Tilt meter, obviously still rising quite high. Uh, highest level of inflation here in at least five years. And that includes the uh, inflation level seen back uh, prior to the uh, past couple eruptions. So something big is brewing underneath this area. Uh, this earthquake activity that we're seeing could be in relation to the further uh, intrusion of magma that's going on here uh, beneath this area. Um, this, I guess it's a desert re region up here within the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Uh, definitely some swelling going on. It's obvious here in the inflation chart. Now this is just keep just going up and up and up. Uh, now who's to say here that this may not follow the past trends Past trends, meaning a few days of inflation, followed by deflation. Um, we'll have to see what uh, tomorrow brings in. If it does follow that trend, uh, then we should see potentially tomorrow some type of downward trend and then followed back up by an inflationary trend. It's just, that's the way it's been here um, over the past couple months. 
It's always been a little inflation here, followed by at least a couple days of deflation. Uh, so yeah, definitely some interesting activity taking place here. Uh, the more that this goes on, the higher the inflation continues there. Uh, obviously, the, the more likely that we'll see um, some potentially some newer regions out here open up in terms of uh, the uh, fissures out here. It's a little interesting activity here. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll report back on that tomorrow, see if the USGS has uh, anything to say about that. Um, let's see here. California is starting to light up as well. A um, handful of earthquakes across the Sierra Nevada. And most of the movement, though, looks like it's triggering down here in Southern California. Around the uh, north of the Garlock Fault shear zone, a couple of earthquakes up here. Uh, in the last 24 hours, we did see that 3.5 early this morning. But overall, seismic activity does appear to be picking up here after quite a bit of quietness here in Southern California. Uh, we are getting some earthquake activity here as well on the San Andreas Fault. That is the southern segment where the 8.1 earthquake will occur one day. This, you know, obviously we don't want to see that thing go, but we got to watch some earthquake swarms here, see if anything does pick up overnight. Uh, any, any, any time we see like that type of activity, obviously it gets me a little bit on the nervous side because, uh, well, that's not a good sign, right? Type of swarming right there where an area that's completely locked and loaded, so to speak, in terms of uh, the stress out here. Uh, but for now, just a little bit of earthquake activity is noted here around the uh, Cathedral City area north. But it's still within the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, some activity down here stirring up in the Hilldale area of Utah. Uh, also a little bit of movement down here in the Gulf of California. Uh, this is uh, what do we got? 4.2, 10 kilometers defaulted depth for that earthquake. Texas and uh, obviously Oklahoma still seeing some movement out here uh, within the oil fields. Quite a bit of earthquake activity taking place out here recently. Uh, let's see, Puerto Rico area. They have been seeing a little bit of swarming up here across the Puerto Rico Trench. Still seeing some earthquake activity here. Uh, the last one, though, looks like it's going to be a three-pointer. About 15 kilometers deep or so north of the Puerto Rico area, but still within the Puerto Rico Trench region. Keep an eye on that and see if uh, things kick back up there. I'm kind of keeping an eye on my bit rate here. Earlier this morning, had some weird stuff going on. Uh, it, it's almost like someone put a hack on my IP where I completely lost my upload capabilities. Uh, I'm sure you guys seen it if you watched the update. So I don't know. It seems like every time I start to go live here, uh, someone wants to try to pull the plug on me for some reason. Someone. Someone behind the curtains, right? Standing out there in the shadows. I'll never know who it is. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know, but keeping an eye on it. Hopefully it doesn't pop back up here. But hey, that means I got a faithful viewer out there, right? I know I have quite a few uh, faithful watchers, but that one person probably spends so much of their time watching me and then it just, they love to see, uh, Maybe try to pull my strings, but it really doesn't. And it's just a slightly irritating. Okay, let's move on here. I'm spending too much time even chatting about that. 4.6 earthquake, Santiago, Chile area. Uh, that lo does look like it's just onshore. Uh, right here it says offshore, but it's really not. Uh, 47 kilometers deep for that earthquake. All right, now we did see... Obviously, that larger earth earthquake uh, earlier this afternoon. Looks like the USGS is keeping that at a 6.5 earthquake. Uh, EMSC reporting that as a 6.8. With that adjustment, looks like that's uh, definitely triggered some adjustment further up north here across this area of the plate boundary. And uh, the, the general plate movement here, the strain, so to speak, uh, does show that west-northwestward movement of the Pacific Plate. These areas up here across the Kuro Kamachaka and the Aleutian Trench are seeing elevated movement following that 6.8 um, earlier this afternoon. So we'll continue to watch these regions here. It uh, doesn't look like we're seeing any adjustment or further migration across this area following that 6.8. Uh, sometimes we do, uh, but there's a lot of older movement quakes there from um, from prior, prior from that uh, 6.8. Deep, man, that's a deep earthquake over here. 
across areas of um, the Himalayas, it looks like. Um, goodness, is USGS reporting that? Doesn't look like it. Uh, they did report one earthquake, uh, 4.7, there in China. But uh, yeah, one of these earthquakes here, definitely uh, super deep. I believe it's that one, 4.0. Look at that. Could that be true? Almost 700 kilometers down there? Goodness, if that's the case, something big time is uh, building up here across the Himalayas. Obviously, it is a um, subduction zone region. That area does sit right over here, the India Plate, along with the uh, Eurasia Plate. Quite the interaction out there in terms of uh, plate dynamics. Continue to watch that area. As uh, far as the rest of the movement goes uh, across the Mediterranean, um, looks like a handful of threes out there today and some twos. There's some uh, activity stirring up there in ice, and that 3.1 is pretty new. Uh, I believe that is the one that we just seen, right? Let me double check here. May have may have some activity stirring up right now. So yeah, that 3.4 coming in uh, about an hour or so ago, it looks like. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this area of ice and definitely showing some interesting development out here. No eruption yet, but uh, it's still quite active out there. All right, uh, New Zealand, anything going on down there? Let's see what we got. Looks like a couple three stirring up there, maybe even a four pointer. So on that note, let's go double check, see what's going on there. For the folks down in uh, New Zealand, uh, many different sites that we can check here. And um, oh, there we go, that's the one I was looking for. Uh, Geonet servers here, 3.2, about three hours ago or so. It looks like we did have uh, some earthquake activity there. North Island, 2.5 there, seven hours ago. Um, so a little bit of activity stirring up out here. A little bit of shaking being reported out here from these quakes. That one was from October. Uh, but this earthquake right here looks like uh, not a big quake, but a few folks did report filling that. Looks like about 100 folks around the Wellington area. Let's see what we got here for the earthquake drums across this region. Any major swarming going on? Quick glance here. Doesn't look like it. Just those uh, handful of uh, uh, smaller quakes that were reported there on the uh, the uh, Earthquake 3D globe. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Ooh, 2.7 out here in... Definitely got some buildup going on here across the West Coast, man. Goodness. Whenever we see this inland activity away from the plate boundary, obviously there's quite a bit of strain brushing up here against this region. Keep an eye on the West Coast here. That's uh, actually quite active uh, in terms of the uh, multitude of quakes out here. Here's all these oil fields getting hit uh, with earthquake activity. A couple of the latest ones here. Uh, literally within inches of uh, some type of oil pumping operation. Uh, that's those tanks out there. Um, wastewater disposal facility ponds there as well. And that's just uh, obviously the North American plate being under some strain out here. So keep an eye on the West Coast for now. It does look quite uh, possible we could see some movement here with this elevated activity in general across this region of the uh, of the plate boundaries. South America region real quick. Uh, uh, what do we got there? 4.6 coming in just a couple hours ago it looks like. That's that one. Uh, that they call offshore. Okay, let's see what else we got. Anything we are potentially missing? Doesn't look like it. Uh, South Sandwich Trench did have a 4.9 down there, it looks like. All right, let's go check out space weather. And then I think I'm ready for bed. I'm not even joking. Uh, we do have what looks like a pretty large coronal hole coming around here. Are we currently flaring? That's an older image. Uh, but you can see it here on this the newest one here, this latest uh, image of the sun does show that coronal hole. Pretty large. We'll have to watch that in the coming days, see if it uh, affects uh, potentially maybe some uh, auroras in the forecast. Far as these flares go, or lack thereof of flares, let's take a look at the sunspots here. They are diminishing up here across the northern hemisphere of the sun. 
and uh, pretty much all other sunspots are decaying except for this one down here and that is a definitely in position uh, or facing the earth right now uh, so if anything does pop off from 3500 that does have the potential to be geo effective uh, 3500 is the class that it harbors right now which is a beta gamma looks like 34.99 in there as well um i guess it's going to be this one right here not super complex but it looks like maybe a little bit of complexity going there across that region either way we'll continue to watch that and uh, see how these flares decide to act 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 35 x flare uh, lowered there to about five percent chance now we do have a possibility maybe of uh, that uh, well there was a little cme that was earth directed here um looks like way earlier this morning we did see a well a little filament eruption that was uh somewhat earth directed i don't think it uh is going to hit us dead on just due to the location uh that it took place on there uh, on the sun but uh well, looks like maybe we'll see a g1 class storm coming up here as we head into the end of november we'll cover that uh, as we get a little bit closer all right uh real quick glance here at the tropical models here Let's see if we got anything uh, major coming in to the west coast area it doesn't look like it uh our chances of rain keep getting pushed off and pushed off and that is due mainly to well mainly because of the uh the way that this these storm systems are coming in out of the northwest they're rather cold uh but they lack a lot of the moisture and unfortunately i don't see any major change out there uh here for the west coast and that is a bummer i'm hoping we get some rain it's quite dry out here folks uh either way um let's see let's go ahead and look at the uh precipitation total accumulated precipitation out here uh for the states see who gets the rain up there it looks like the pacific northwest is going to get quite a bit california high and dry uh most part uh and then uh, looks like a good portion of the east out there getting uh, a little bit of rainfall that fills in a little bit as we head into the middle of december look at california that is not good man that is not good at all all right i'm out of here folks we'll catch you guys uh back here tomorrow sometime again keep an eye west coast region and uh just in general things look like they're really stirring up here across the plates following that uh that six pointer from earlier definitely set off a little domino effect have a good one folks take care and stay safe out there <laughs>